Il y a tout au long des marchés de Provence Qui sentent le matin, la mer et le midi Des parfums de fenouil, melons et sœurs You know, I think probably the most striking thing about the history of, of food and gastronomy in France is the productive tension uh, between, on the one hand, the drive for innovation, the drive for increased refinement, for increased elegance, and on the other hand, a sort of deep and enduring respect for traditions, for natural foods. And um, in, in the period that, that I work on, you can really see this and that there's a, there's a notion that the cuisine is going to become more delicate, is the term that they use. But what that really means is that they're going to focus on fresh ingredients. And so you see the first techniques of using flour and fat-based sauces, for example, that bring out the flavors of ingredients. Also the idea that you're going to shorten cooking time so that the flavors and the textures of ingredients will come out. And so it's that, that sort of tension between, on the one hand, you know, elegance, refinement, uh, increased innovation. On the other hand, a real respect for tradition, for foods, for their natural flavors and tastes. Uh, terroir is a funny word in that there's really no English equivalent. I mean, the best equivalent we have in English is soil. But soil is, I think, a much more pejorative word than terroir is. Terroir gives that sense of tradition. And for me, it's, it's not just, it's, it's the soil, it's the geography, uh, it's the climate, but it's also, you know, the products themselves, and it's also the way that people work the land, and all of those come together in sort of your typical products that have, a, have the goût de terroir, the taste of, of the land. The image of a French family sitting down to, to, to have a meal. And for me, so that com combination of, of conversation, taking the time to eat, you know, the mini courses of a meal, for me that represents sort of the most typical uh, the most powerful image of what French food uh, is at its, at its most basic, at its most fundamental. You know, from the, you know, the appetizer, well, actually the aperitif first, right? And then the, and then the appetizer, and then the, and then the soup, and a main dish, and a fromage, and, and salad, and, and dessert. But that, that coming together around food, uh, I think, is, is, very, is very typically French. I think, you know, it depends on whether you're talking to an American or to a French person. If you're talking to an American, I think it's typically those regions that are associated with, with wines. Those are the regions that we know the best. So you have, you know, you have Champagne, you, you, have, you have Burgundy. Um, I think when you're talking to a French person, probably Burgundy would be up there too, not just because of the wines, but also because of, of the foods you have. You know, the, the chicken from Bresse, you have, um, you have the boeuf from Chérol. Um, but I think uh, also for a French person, it's often, you know, these regions that are, that are deep inside of France. Places like the Auvergne, where you know, sort of isolated regions where people have been eating sausage and cheese and, and products like that for years, precisely because they're not the breadbasket regions of France. They're places where people developed special foods in order to get through the long winters. And it's that sort of notion of those foods that kind of warm you up uh, in the winter that has made those regions some of the most uh, symbolic regions, I think, for the notion of terroir and, and traditional cuisine. Voici l'estragon et la belle échalote, le joli poisson de la Marie-Charlotte. Voulez-vous pas vrai un bouquet de lavande ou bien quelques œillets